Hey everybody, how are you all doing? I hope you all doing well. My name is Isaac Paradise and welcome to Heroes of New Earth Advanced Settings Tutorial where we are gonna go through all of Hon settings and talk about every single one of them including graphics, interface and controls. These are the most important three and before we even begin I want to talk about something which is repairing your Hon. Now you do that by going to the settings then you'll go to troubleshooting and you'll find repair Hon. Now repairing Hon basically helps you with the bugs and issues you got in the game and definitely definitely helps you with crashing in the game and you know fixes that and won't happen to you anymore and fixes a whole lot of things that I don't even know about. So just do that and let's jump right into it. Now first thing first, we're gonna go through the graphics, we're gonna go through every single graphic, which one is the best, which one is the worst, which one gives you the most frames, which one takes a lot of frames from you but doesn't do a whole lot. So we're gonna go through all of that and in the end I'm gonna give you a suggestion of what is the best graphics you can get, what if it should be ultra high, medium, you know, very low and things like that and how to get the most frames out of your PC. So. First of all, we're gonna begin with the video drive. Now in video drives, there's only two options, which are DirectX and OpenGL, and you should always run with DirectX, and let me show you why. Now when it comes to DirectX, the frames are high, the colors are all good, everything looks good, right? But when you go to OpenGL, you'll notice that everything changes, the frames drop a lot, the colors just become different, darker, the colors are not, like, as bright as before it's weird i don't know what it is but it just changes everything it makes everything worse so that's why you should never run on opengl always run with direct x simple as that with when it comes to video drive never run with opengl always run with direct x as you can see here in the comparison between them now moving on to full screen mod and simply you should have full screen mod on all the time because it's simply improves the performance and the frames and makes everything better and make the game run really nice and smooth and now moving on to exclusive mod and exclusive mod basically is that if you got it on it's basically full screen so when you alt tab it will take some time about like three to two seconds for it to actually go to another window or open whatever you want but when you turn it off it's basically full screen but windowed. So when you alt tab or something, Hun will be still running in the background, but everything will be quicker and faster. Everything that got to do with Windows or anything like that would be quicker. Things that you gotta do with your PC will be quicker. It's instant. It won't take any time, it won't take any delay. It's everything is just instant and real nice and quick. You should keep exclusive mod on because it does improve performance and give you more frames. So yeah, keep it on. Now moving on to frame queuing, now frame queuing it says here that it may increase display smoothness and I did turn it on and I did play with it and honestly I did not notice any difference with that but it does say as well that it may increase input delay and that's true it did seriously increase the input delay heavily so I don't recommend it at all because it's seriously a really really bad option so turn that thing off and never turn it on now moving on to resolution. Now resolution is the most important option in graphics simply because it just makes everything better. The effects, the shatter, the texture, the model, it makes everything better. And if you got a PC that can give you like 60 frames with all options on low, don't change your resolution and make it lower to put these graphics on high or medium or whatever because resolution is the best, it gives you the most graphics, it gives you a better looking game. It's the best thing. You always have to keep your resolution on the highest and on max. Always keep your resolution at your monitor resolution. Keep it at the best. It's the best option in the graphics. Now moving on to vertical sync or as it's called V-Sync. Now when it comes to V-Sync, you're basically turning your PC into a console where it would stay on 60 frames the whole time. Now with V-Sync, you should turn it on if you have 70 frames or lower, and you should turn it off if you have 80 or 90 or more frames. Simply because if you have it on 70 or lower, in the fights you'll probably go underneath 40 and 50. When you turn the V-Sync on, it'll try its best to keep it at 60 even in the fights on all of these things. But when you got it on 90 and stuff like that, when you're playing the game, you won't get the full frames that your PC can give you, which is a bad thing, so then you should turn it off. 
But if you want to keep at 60 frames and you don't really care and you want it to be at that the whole time, then yeah, sure, turn it on. So in conclusion, again, if you have it at 70 or lower, turn it on. If you have it on 80 or higher, then turn it off. So now moving on to hardware memory mod now when it comes to hardware memory mod it basically lowers your memory usage or your ram usage and in return the recovery will take longer time now this is basically for the pcs who got low ram like four gigabyte of ram two gigabyte of ram and stuff like that honestly even if you got four gigabyte of ram i do not suggest for you to turn this thing off because when you turn it off it seriously takes way longer to recover so just don't turn it off even if you have low memory ram keep it on so right now we're gonna go through these three which are the color depth the refresh rate and the aspect ratio now color depth unfortunately i only have one option there so i don't know where it does exactly but i'm pretty sure it's just this thing with color so just keep it at max i'm pretty sure it won't really change a whole lot and refresh rate just keep it on max just like resolution always keep it on max when aspect ratio always keep it on automatic i feel like that's the best thing like i don't know if you want to try it out the other stuff it's not worth it just keep it on automatic and it just does the job for you so now that we are done with the video graphics now we are gonna go ahead and jump into advanced options where the serious stuff begins so let's just jump right into it so first thing first we're gonna go ahead and begin with anti-aliasing where basically it smooths and sharpness the edges which is true but at the same time anti-aliasing is one of the powerful yet bad options and i'll show you why right here now right here what you're looking at is the anti-aliasing turned on times 8 and right here it's on 4, right here is on 2 and right here it's set on none. Now as you can tell there's not a huge difference if any difference actually. The only difference you notice is when you put the times 8 and compare it to the none. Now, you can tell the edges are actually better at times 8, but it's barely noticeable. And keep in mind, I am zoomed into the max near the heroes and the creeps. But when you're playing Hun as a gameplay, your camera will be up top and nothing will actually change when you change the anti-aliasing right there. But when you zoom in, you can barely notice any difference. So to be completely honest with you, anti-aliasing is such a bad option. Like seriously, just don't turn it on. Keep it on none. It's the best thing you can do. And not only that, but it actually takes a lot of frames out of your PC for no reason whatsoever. So my suggestion for anti-aliasing, just, just turn it off, put it on none. Never put it at times 2 or 4 or 8, just put it in none, it's the best thing for your PC and for your frames. So now moving on to water quality, now when it comes to water quality, it's the second option of bad yet powerful option, and let me show you here why. As you can see here in the comparison between them, you can tell that there is barely any difference between the high or the low or the medium or the very high where things are really not that noticeable and it does take a lot of frames so just like the anti-aliasing i'm not gonna talk about it a lot just put it at low it seriously does nothing and it takes a lot of frames so now moving on to model quality now when it comes to model quality model quality is one of these options like anti-aliasing that depends heavily on other options for it to take an effect now as you can see here in the comparison between the high and low and medium, when you look at Shadow Blade, between the high, low and medium, you can tell that literally nothing changed. When you look at Magmus though, you can see at the high, his hand is normal. At medium, his hand is pixelated and in a blocky shape. In low, you can tell that his hand is really messed up then. But when you look at Gunblade, between high and medium, nothing changed. But in low, nothing changed as well, but some texture was removed from his model. And when you look at the trees behind them, at high, low, and medium, each option just removes more and more of the tree texture. So when you go to high, there's more texture there. When you go to medium, there's lower, and low, there's even lower texture in there. And model quality works at towers as well, but in a weird way. Because if you put high and look at the tower, it looks normal. Put it on medium, the tower becomes thinner. Put it at low, the tower becomes less thinner. 
which is a really weird thing because if it makes the model smaller then at low it should be even smaller but no when you go to low it becomes bigger and actually for my eyes it becomes even more sharper which is very weird but um, apparently it just makes it thinner I don't know in conclusion model quality is an option that depends heavily on the other options but when it comes to model quality, it's not as strong as anti-aliasing and water quality. So it doesn't take as much frames as these two take. But in the same time, it changes a whole lot in your game. To be completely honest with you, model quality is an option that heavily depends on you and how you want your game to look. So if you want higher frames but don't care a whole lot about how trees and heroes looks because you got the other options on high then maybe you should keep it on low but if you do then keep it on high so to be completely honest with you model quality is an option that depends heavily on you so you gotta go and see if you want it on high or you want it on low or medium this is not a thing that I can tell you about. So now moving on to shutter quality. Now shutter quality is one very, very strong option and it's a very strong option visually. And let me show you here why. Now here's shutter set as high and here's shutter set as medium and here's the shutter quality set on low. And as you can tell at high, everything looks nice and smooth and clean at medium everything looks a little bit darker and things just look way darker but at low things look even way and way darker honestly shutter quality is a very very important option and it should be a higher priority you should be always keeping shutter quality at the high and not medium or low because this option is seriously one good option for your quality but in the same time keep in mind shutter quality takes a lot of frames so be careful with that but at the same time this option is very 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 good and should be your higher priority than each and every single one of the others now moving on to shadow quality now i'm pretty sure a lot of you guys know about shadow quality so let me just show you here a comparison between high medium low and disabled now, when it comes to shadow quality, honestly, keep it at least at low. Because when it comes to shadow, when there's shadow on the creeps or on the hero, it makes it easier for your eyes to notice things. It makes it easier to spot things. It makes it easier to spot a creep, to spot a hero, and everything. So to be completely honest with you, when it comes to shadow, at least keep it at low. And yes, shadow takes a lot of frames, but you gotta at least keep it at low. So when it comes to shadow quality, it's low and higher. So now moving on to texture. Now texture is just like shadow. It's a very very strong option, but in the same time it is very strong visually. And now let me show you here the comparison between texture at high, at medium, and at low. Now texture is a really really good option and to be completely honest with you I do highly recommend putting texture on high because it is a really really good option. Yes it takes a lot of frames but in the same time it changes all of your game. So, by my recommendation, you should put texture at high. So now moving on to these options right here, and first thing first is display footage. Now when it comes to display footage, basically what it does is that it changes the trees a little bit. But to be honest, that change on the trees is barely noticeable, it's not worth it at all. Just turn this thing off and never turn it on, it generally doesn't do anything. So now moving on to dynamic lights. Now when it comes to dynamic lights, it basically lights up the fire and some cool effects around the map. So if there's a fire somewhere in the map, it would give it some lighting effect. And honestly, this effect gives a lot, a lot of cool visuals in the map. To be honest, it makes the map looks way cooler and way nicer. So honestly, turn it on. It's a really, really cool effect and it's super nice and cool. So now moving on to reflections. Now reflection basically the objects in the game reflect in the water and this effect to be completely honest with you it is very weak and you can barely notice it so honestly like just turn it off it's not really a whole big deal and it doesn't change the game a whole lot so just turn it off. So now moving on to refraction. Now when it comes to refraction, it basically enhances some tiny teeny little effects in the game such as let's say Shadow Blade Sword 
will have more effects when it's turned on, but less effects when it's turned off, and a whole lot more things, but it's barely noticeable to be honest, so it's not worth it, but at the same time, if you want more visual effects, turn it on, but if you don't care, just turn it off, it's really not worth it. Now moving on to post processing, now when it comes to post processing, to be honest, this effect is very very strong visually, and frame wise but honestly this effect changes a lot in colors and it seriously changes your whole game this effect is very very strong but in the same time it is really really strong visually to be completely honest with you you should seriously turn this effect on it is seriously really really good visually and it changes all of your game it changes all of the colors this effect is very strong and you should seriously turn it on it is really good now moving on to texture filtering, now when it comes to texture filtering, let me just show you here the difference between the time 16, the time 12, the time 8, the time 6, the time 4, time 2, trillionaire, billionaire, and set on none. Now, as you can tell between these differences, that there is legit no difference between 16, the time 16 one, till the billionaire, there's legit no difference whatsoever. The only difference you would only notice, it's when it's set on none, and compare it to each and every single one of them, it doesn't matter which one you compare it. Let's compare the none to the time 16, and then the none to the time 2 you won't notice any difference between them. So when it comes to texture filtering, to be honest with you, just set it at least to time 2. Because this effect is very, very strong visually, but it doesn't need the maximum quality for it to show you the most effects that it can give you. You can just set it on time 2 and it would be really good and it would just give you the most out of it. But if you set it to time 16, that's going to be really hard on your PC and barely, barely give you anything for that. Like, it barely gives you anything. If anything, actually. Just put it at time 2 and that's just perfect. Put it there and keep it at that. Don't put it at higher because it will just drain more power out of your PC. So now moving on to rim lighting. Now when it comes to rim lighting, it basically puts some lights around the map. It says here that the model stands out against the background. That's true because it makes everything, like the whole map, it gives it a white effect or a white bright color around the whole map where everything, the creeps, the characters, the heroes, everything is just way more obvious. And let me show you here the difference in between rim lighting turned on and rim lighting turned off here's another example of rim lighting turned on and then rim lighting turned off this option is very helpful and it helps you by tons and tons when it comes to recognizing things and noticing things and you know the heroes the models and everything so honestly turn this uh, option on it's very very helpful and it will help you by tons and tons and it will actually make the game look a little bit nicer so yeah turn it on so now moving on to display skybox um no comments about this option, it generally doesn't do anything, it doesn't show a skybox on the water, it just doesn't do anything. I'm not gonna go through this, just turn it off, it generally just doesn't do anything. So now that we are done with all of the options, now I'm gonna give you my suggestion on how to get the best of frame slash good looking game in Han. Now as you can tell, my resolution is set on max, we talked about this, your resolution is the most important. Even though if your resolution was on max and the rest was on low and you're still getting low frames, your resolution is the most important. You can tell that the exclusive mod is on, keep it always on none. And the video driver, keep it at DirectX and not OpenGL, keep that in mind, always DirectX, not OpenGL. And the hardware memory mod is turned on, keep that in mind as well. And if we scroll down right here, you would notice that anti-aliasing is set on none, always be set on none, don't change that. You can notice that the water quality is set on low, always put it at low, it's a very bad option, it doesn't give you anything. The display foliage is turned off, like never turn it on, it's really bad. The refractions or refractions and display skybox are turned off as well. And if you're still having low frames, maybe try it lowering the shadow to low or medium, or the model quality to low or medium, 
the texture as well try to lower it to lower medium and the texture filtering try putting it at time two and see where you get and post processing maybe try to turn it off if you do all of these i'm pretty sure you will get a really good result anyways this is my suggestion for you guys i hope you enjoyed this video and i hope it helped you by tons and tons and next episode it's going to be probably about controls or interface i don't know which is going to be first but these two are coming in the next two episodes anyways i hope you guys enjoyed please don't forget to like subscribe if you like this channel in general and share this video with people who might be helped by this video hopefully I hope this video helped you guys, and of course, I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.